My guest today is Dina Deck, who is the director of the Bridgehampton Historic Society, uh, which is in fact a museum. And I guess a society, is there a reason why they call it a society, do you know? I don't, I think historical societies, first of all, hello, and thank you, Dan, for having me. I'm very grateful and honored to be, uh, to be asked to participate with, uh, with you today. Um, I, in the past, historical societies were called societies. It was, I, I'm not certain what the background of that is, but we are actually morphing into becoming the Bridgehampton Museum. So we are the Bridgehampton Historical Society. Uh, that is our 501c3, but we have a DBA, uh, which we are becoming the Bridgehampton Museum. Now, just to uh, let uh, listeners know, um, the uh, building at the monument in Bridgehampton, which is one of those great big white uh, uh, Greek revival buildings has been, um, was purchased, I think almost 20 years ago and has over a, that span since uh, Bill Clinton was president, I guess. <laughs> um, wow. slowly matured in from an, uh, a fairly wrecked state to uh, one of the most beautiful buildings on the East End with a beautiful white picket fence in front and uh, built around 1845, I guess, somewhere around there for sort of the well-to-do Bridgehampton merchants. And um, um, is it finally going to uh, become your new home? And if so, when do you think that might happen? So we are, we're on, we bookend the Hamlet. We're the Corwith House, which is across from the Candy Kitchen. And then we're also, uh, we own that building and that property and those barns. And then we're the stewards of the uh, Rogers House, which is the house that you're speaking about, the big white house on the south side of Montauk Highway, right by the, the monument, Notion Road. And then there's a little building next to it, which is the archive building, which was originally Martyr's Barn. Uh, those buildings were purchased together in 2003, and we steward both of those buildings. And our hope is uh, we're going to open in June. And uh, we're right now working on our first exhibition. We're putting programming together, which actually has already started running. Um, uh, we uh, have a, um, an author's uh, a distinguished lecturer series, which is authors and historians and others talking about their work, their life's work or project-based work, reading from their work in front of an audience. And we're, that started about two weeks ago. We have our second um, evening happening tomorrow night with a, a, an award-winning journalist and author by the name of Tom Clavin, uh, who's written a book. Uh, my gosh, he's written almost 20 books. Um, <laughs> but this particular book is about a World War II a uh, fighter pilot, American fighter pilot, who was uh, shot down and sent to Buchenwald uh, and spent several months there in Buchenwald uh, before the end of the, the war. It's just a heartbreaking story, extraordinary story of survival. Uh, so yes, to, the long answer is we are going to open in June and then we will be up and running and moving forward. And it's been a, a long haul. We're very excited uh, to get there, to be here. I think the... Uh... Uh, the building has been repaired in a way that was it was built. I'm not sure, but I think there might be pegs in it instead of nails in some places. And um, it's quite a beautiful building. Um, so you're right. The, the restoration is extensive, it was an extensive restoration. Uh, and every moment where they could uh, sort of keep and restore an original piece of that house they did. In some cases, parts of the floors had to be replaced. Walls had to be replastered. Uh, but the fixtures, many of the fixtures are the original fixtures. In many places, the original floor, floors are in place. Uh, all the doors, we have all of the little um, room numbers from when it was an inn. Uh, all of those things have been meticulously uh, collected and kept. And that will be, we're gonna talk about all of the restoration itself, the history of the house, 
in our, this first exhibition that's going to open in June. And do you want to know a little bit about the history of the house? Would that be of interest to you? Sure. So the house uh, was originally a, a homestead uh, in sort of the late uh, 18th century owned by Jerry's uh, Fordham. So many of you, many people know, uh, have heard that name, the Fordham's Fordham Road in Southampton, for example, and other, other roads. Uh, and he sold that property to the Rose family in uh, 1824. And Abraham Rose, who was a jurist and attorney, uh, moved into that house with his new bride, Eliza Gilder, in 1824. And they lived there uh, until 1839, when Nathaniel Rogers bought the house uh, in 1839. And he immediately started uh, renovating. <laughs> it's a very, it's a true Hampton story. <laughs> he bought the house and uh, immediately put the entire front portico on, all of the front rooms, the four front rooms in the front of the house, the columns that you see, the cupola at the top, the second floor overlooking those first, <laughs> those first rooms are all his, uh, his uh, conception of what he wanted for that house and how he made that happen. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, it's an interesting story actually, how he bought that house and, and the connection he has to the Rose family. But just to, to tell you, um, he died very soon after, bought the house in 1839, started restoration of renovation around 1840-ish, and he had died by the time it was 1844. And I think uh, renovation at a time where there was no railroad, you know, where, where were you getting your materials, but off of a steamship from Sag Harbor, and you had to pull everything up by cart, horse-drawn cart, must have been quite tough. And he was an older man uh, by the time he bought that house. Um, and so he dies and his wife uh, keeps it for about 13 years and then sells it to James Hunting. Uh, James Hunting, many people may know the Hunting family, the Fritz family, they're related and connected. Um, uh, he was a very well off, um, incredibly successful whaler. And he bought the house and held on to it for several years. He splits the property. Um, he lives there through the Civil War, splits the property, builds on Ocean Road, and then eventually sells the Rogers house. And it's bought by another family, the Bost family, uh, who sort of hires someone to try to turn it into an inn. Um, uh, and it kind of goes for a little bit. And then um, they sell it again to another family that kind of uses it as a family, you know, a summer place, just a party house. And then they kind of abandon it and the house falls into disrepair. And um, in about, I'm just gonna look at my notes because I'm not certain, in 1894, um, the Hedges, Hedges and Hoffing family bought it. Uh, and they, uh, that was a father-in-law and a son-in-law. And they ran it as an inn until about 1949. And then it became a private home where James Hopping was the last tenant of that house until 2003 when we bought, when we, but the town actually bought the house. So that's that's the little microcosm history. Yes, and, uh, I think I think that's fine. I think that Mr. Hopping uh, lived in it with um, without as as it was deteriorating and it didn't do any work to fix it up. So it was, in fact, he uh, leased out the front yard to become a gas station. Uh, right. And the gas station was actually built right on his front yard. Yeah, I remember that too. And uh, uh, and then uh, finally, when this thing was going to be re completely restored, um, uh, the gas station was removed, and it, it uh, it's now about to open. What are some of the treasures that the Bridgehampton Historic Society has that we will be able to see when people come to visit the uh, new museum? It's a great question. Uh, I'm not going to give it all away, but we have uh, Abraham Rose's will. So as you may remember, Abraham Rose lived there in 1824. Uh, we have a miniature portrait uh, by Nathaniel Rogers. So what I neglected to say is that Nathaniel Rogers, his story is interesting. He was uh, training to be a shipbuilder. He uh, became uh, horribly injured, almost gravely injured, and had to give up his uh, career path in becoming a shipbuilder. And um, Sam Rose, Abraham's father, was his doctor. Uh, they're all from Bridgehampton, all born in this area and, and lived in Bridge. 
Um, and Sam Rose was one of the very first who encouraged Nathaniel Rogers to become an artist, um, gave him books and ideas and perhaps even brushes. We're not totally certain um, if that's true, but that kind of thing. And Nathaniel Rogers pivoted, uh, also a very modern story, <laughs> you know, pivoted career-wise and became a very successful, one of the most successful in the country, uh, miniature portraits. So we have one of his miniature portraits that we're going to show. Yes. Um, Are you restoring it as a private home or as a, a no, museum? No, it, it'll be a museum. And it'll be uh, a museum that will have, it will be exhibition based, but we're hoping also it'll be a place to spark discussion about who we are as a community, where have we been? I often say, you know, to know where we're going, we need to know where we've been. So okay. it's an opportunity for us to think about some of those things and also talk about uh, our lives now and, and where we are as a community now and how we'd like to move forward uh, because we're in, we're in flux as a community. What, uh, what do you envision as uh, some of the events that will take place there? So we have the Distinguished Lecture Series that's happening. Uh, we're also going to run a kids camp this summer, which we're really excited about. Everything is connected uh, in sort of this self-identification or, uh, you know, what is our current history? Uh, how are we exploring that through the arts? How are we exploring that through discussion and exhibition? Because uh, history, to me, to many, is not sort of the thing about people who live long ago and there's people that no lo are no longer alive. We are living in history right now. This is history. We're making history. So the exploration of this moment uh, through programming is what we're hoping to do. So uh, we'll have some kids camp. We're having a lecture series. Um, we're also hoping to partner with Ma's House, which is um, Jeremy Dennis, who's Shinnecock and has created an artist residency program there. Uh, some of his artists will be coming uh, to our space uh, to give workshops and, and talks. Um, and we hope to have um, all sorts of programs that uh, invite the community in. That's really our goal, to make this a house for everyone to share, to be part of, to, I, I really don't want a space that's untouchable, that no one can come to, because this building has been closed for so long. You know, we want to open the doors and find a way to invite people in to talk about the things that are important and interesting to them today, but also through the lens of of history. One of the big um, uh, events in Bridgehampton history is the Bridgehampton Militia, which uh, fought in both the Revolutionary War and then also in the War of 1812. And uh, will you have any artifacts from that or will you have any things? We about do. That? We have a sword from the War of 1812. We have also. Uh, a um, it's it's in somewhat of disrepair, but we do have a sword a sword from the Revolutionary War era. Uh, so some of those pieces will be on display, and we also uh, have a large. Um, I don't know if they're we haven't verified if they're daguerreotypes or just tin types, but uh, photos, nineteenth century, mid century, late mid century, nineteenth century photos. Uh, so those will be on display as well. Uh, as well as architectural elements from the restoration, um, other uh, uh, paper artifacts that we have, papers and letters um, uh, from residents to each other about meaningful moments in our history. Uh, we have a Saturday Evening Post um, uh, magazine from the 1940s, and we might actually put something like that out. Um, pieces that, uh, you know, sort of talk about who we are. And we also, by the way, um, were uh, given the gift uh, by Klaus and Helen Hoy of a great uh, deal of their work before they died. Their foundation gave us a great deal of their work. So we have a huge Hoy collection. Um, and Hoy was a local artist, well-known local artist, um, whose work is incredibly relevant today. It's, it's environmentally based. A lot of it is about the sea, about whales, about farming. Very, very beautiful watercolors and lithographs and paintings. Uh, and that will be part of this exhibition as well. And moving forward, as part of that gift uh, was uh, sort of the mandate to support local artists. So local artists will also be part uh, of the type of pieces that are shown in this house. 
as we move forward. I was told that on a number of pieces of the beams of, uh, of a famous tavern, which was across the street, there was a big historical sign about it uh, on the corner that it was a Revolutionary War tavern. I, I, I happen to know that during the late 1930s, it was still up and uh, the uh, government had uh, authorized that it be measured and uh, architectural plans be created from the inn itself. Uh, the inn itself, this would have been located uh, next door to the, the, the Bridgehampton Bank Starbucks building. And uh, I've, I've seen pieces of lumber which are on the uh, ground on the, uh, I guess on the Eastern side of the, uh, the, the Historical Society building. And I wondered if you knew about that. So those, oh, you're talking about the, um, that sort of pile of material that's between the archive building and the Rogers house? Yes. I, I, you know, I don't know for certain. I don't want to, I'm still very new to this position. So I only started, um, you know, in the spring of last year. Um, I believe those were donated. Uh, that was a barn that was donated, but I don't know the history of that. So I don't want to say uh, for certain, um, but I believe that that was a, a barn that had been on someone's property that they were trying, an historic barn um, that someone was trying to preserve and they had placed it there. Tell me a little bit about yourself and how, how you got interested in uh, being a historian and a museum director. Well, hmm, you know, Dan, like you, I come to this through the world of journalism. Uh, I was a, a, not really a print, I had a, a couple of clips, not a, not a big print journalist, but I worked in media and I worked in doc film for exhibition. I was on the, the uh, Smithsonian team at the History Channel and we made films and, and other materials for their, for their exhibitions. Um, and I began in public radio and was a public radio producer. And then I had a show and then I went to grad school and I studied uh, journalism at Columbia. And then, uh, and then I worked mostly in doc film and regular film. But throughout my entire career, um, I've been a storyteller. And I think, uh, and a storyteller with as much of an objective eye as, as one can have, although who knows what that really means today, right? But uh, I, I feel strongly that um, history is about telling the stories of those who have lived it and doing that in an engaging way that makes us all remember and know that um, we're all connected, you know? So we are standing in this moment, standing here, having this conversation, you know, over the internet, um, really because of the direct actions of those who came before us, people we've never, didn't, don't know, have, had never met, are unaware of their actions. And in the same way, our actions are setting a stage for those who come after us, our children, our, our generations to come. And so the, the purpose of this work and the purpose of my work as a journalist was to report information, uh, to give context about that information so that people could have a sense of themselves an understanding of where we are in this moment to have a better sense of who they are and so that they could understand that we're all not so alone, you know? So that's really my background was as a journalist. I, I had some, uh, I have a, a nonprofit experience and I had, I had worked at the Parish Art Museum many years ago under Trudy when it was on Job's Lane and I was the educator for adult programming there. I started the film society there. Uh, that's quite a long time ago. And, um, and I ran about, several dozen programs annually, which was a great way to sort of see what the community wanted and needed, but also in that same vein of telling stories about, with the goal of telling stories about who we are, you know, and how do we do that? So that's kind of my background. Well, thanks for being on this the podcast with me and I very much appreciate it. And I look forward to uh, its opening uh, very much. I've been very aware of that building and for a very long time. And I'm glad to see it finally come to fruition. Um, I have to, I have to say, I, I just would like to say, Dan, thank you so much for inviting me to be here. You know, you are such an extraordinary member of this community and someone who has 
told the stories of who we are for quite some time. And I have a very great sense of this place. I've lived here on and off for 40 years because of the work that you've done and because I know who's here and how things function and who's doing what. And I'm so grateful to you and, and, um, and thrilled to be here. So when we open, when I have the opening day, I'm going to invite you. So I want you to come if, you, if you're here, if you can come. But uh, we would love it if you would do that. And I don't want to put you on the spot on a podcast, so I'll I'll send you I'll send you the invite, and we'll see we'll see if you can do it. But aside from that, anytime you'd like a, a private tour, my pleasure as well. Thank you so much for being. I'm talking to Nina Deck and um, the director of the Bridgehampton Museum, about to open. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you.